Hi, I'm Randy Robison. This is Life Today TV. I have Laura Story with me, and if you don't know who Laura is, you, well, you should. You've probably heard her <laughs> sing on the radio, and you've probably sang one of her songs in your church if you do contemporary music. Laura, it's good to see you. Hey, thank you for having me. So um, there's lots of stuff we could talk about. You've got your book, When God Doesn't Fix It, yes. which is very personal, and you're going to talk about that on the broadcast show, and you can see that at lifetoday.org. But then there's this whole music side of you, and I kind of want to focus on some of that. Okay. So, um, well, we all know the song, this this guy named Chris something or other <laughs> sang called Indescribable. Yes, Chris Tomlin. Yes, Chris he's a, Tomlin. Not, he's not very well-known worship leader from <laughs> Texas. <either>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice guy, nice guy. Um, what did it do for you? Because that was like your first, like, boom. Yes. I, I wrote the song Indescribable when I was in college, and, and Chris actually just found it because he was recording with a guy that I had been friends with in college and, and ended up, uh, you know, the Lord really uh, began to open doors in in the kind of praise and worship writing er arena for me uh, through that. And it really, it's been neat. I kind of entered into this whole thing more as a writer than, than a singer. And with, with a bang, too. So <laughs> it's been it's been exciting and a little bit crazy lately. Has anyone ever inappropriately pointed out, which I'm about to do, that the song "Indescribable" is you describing God? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So. I've, I've actually <laughs> I don't think that just like dead silence was copyrightable. I think I had no, to come up with some words. A to little <laughs> more to it. No, no, it's great, great. So and then blessings, number one song. Yes, sir. Uh, and then what else do you, and then there's more. Um, um, I recorded a song called Mighty to Save. I actually didn't write it, but that was one, that was my, my first radio single as far as, as a singer. So and, nobody had heard that. We hadn't all sang that in church until we heard you sing it, right? It was, it was neat. I had heard it, um, just in, at my church, but it was the first recording here in the States, huh. um, from the Hillsong guys over on the island. Yeah. So I appreciated getting to be the voice to kind of present that song here yeah. in the U.S. Great song. And then the other one that. We're going to hear you sing one later. Uh, a song called What a Savior mm. did fairly well. Another song called I Can Just Be Me. And uh, so, yeah. So you, this is success. What, um, when you look at your where you're at, I mean, are you happy mm. with where you're at? I mean, are you, you feel like God's just blessed you? Because, I mean, a lot, a lot of good singer writers or songwriters don't make it to the level that you've made it. But you've been oh, very, very gracious. fortunate. And very talented, of course. I mean, it starts there. I really have been blown away at the fact that the Lord has given me the opportunity for my songs to be used as resources within the church. Mm. I I know that as a kid, you know, I grew up in church, and I wish I could tell you that I remembered exactly every sermon that the preacher taught. But the truth is, I think how I learned who God was was really through the music. That mm. was what kind of captured my attention and and learning those key tenets of the faith, uh, that's part of what the purpose of music in the church is. And and so my songs being included in that kind of collection is, it's just so humbling. I, it really has uh, been a privilege to serve in that way. Is that what you try to do in your lyrics? I'd say, I'd say so. You know, it's, it's presenting who God is, presenting at a what our response as God's people should be. I, I serve at my church. I've, I've been at a church called Perimeter Church for right at 10 years now. And, and a lot of my songwriting comes from me sitting at my desk trying to figure out what we're going to sing that weekend yeah. <laughs> at church and realizing... You're like, that song's uh, not good enough. I'll write my own. Uh, well, <laughs> it doesn't go no. exactly like that. <laughs> no. But I'll, I'll go, I wish there was a song that said blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, why don't we just... Just write a song. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of the, the songs I've written have been inspired by, you know, our lead teachers' uh, sermons and things like that. What has suffering played? Uh, hmm. What kind of role has that played in, in your lyrics? In your uh, music? I'd say that suffering, you know, the song Blessings is a great example. I've, I've joked with people before that I could have written the song Blessings about, like, winning the lottery, and that would have been really fun. <laughs> okay. But I don't think anyone could have really related Usually when, uh, when you're able to speak hope into another person's life, it's because, A, they're in a hard situation, and, B, you've been there as well yeah, yeah. at some point in time. So suffering, uh, you know, I heard a long time ago that pain is God's megaphone into our lives. Mm. I think that, that that's true, and it also allows us to speak into other people's lives. And, um, you know, I think it's First Peter 5 that talks about 
be ready to have that answer when people ask you about the hope that's within you. Right. And I don't know about you if people are always coming up to you saying, hey, could you tell me about the hope that's within you? Uh, <laughs> but the times that that has happened to me has been when people hear about the hard things we've walked through. Hmm. That's when people want to know how you can continue to be positive and how you can continue to to have joy. Is It's when you walk through those hard things in life. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You inspire a lot of people with your music. Where do you get your inspiration? Hmm. Where do I get my inspiration? That Some days I ask that. Some days I'll have like songwriting yeah. sessions and I'm going, where is my inspiration? <laughs> right. Right. I, I'd say that the majority of my songs have been written. Uh, I feel like I write the same song over and over again because it, it really, it's all uh, trying to communicate where God's promises intersect with my daily life. Mm. And that's every song I've written is how is God's word still true in the midst of today's mess? And uh, and so I, I believe that a lot of my inspiration is from the scriptures, but it's also uh, just trying to, to sort through, like, so what? What does that scripture mean in my life today? Because if, sure. if we don't present it as relevant to culture, then, then there's no way that, that those truths can grip their heart the way that God intends for them to. Yeah, yeah. Good, good stuff. If people want to find out more about your book, hear some of the music, what's your website? Uh, LarsStoryMusic.com, or I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of that. that. If you want to see some really cute pictures of kids, I have a three-year-old and twin one-year-olds. It'd be worth going to the website just to see some cute just, kid pictures. Just, yeah, well, <laughs> you don't have to listen in to any music or anything like that. Just well, see let me ask you about that pictures. real quick, because I know in my life, at least in mine and a lot of people I know, having children shifted my view <sighs> of God in a huge way. That is so, so true. What are you saying? I remember the, f- I literally remember the very first song I wrote uh, after having Josie, who's my my oldest she just turned three, and she's my oldest child of three, which is just crazy. <laughs> but I remember uh, my pastor, the uh, lead pastor at our church, asking me to write a song for Easter. And I, you know, I've celebrated Easter within our church for years and years. But there was something about sitting down as a new mom. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even talk about it without getting emotional. Uh, when I thought about God giving his only child not just for his best friend, but for the people that had so uh, offended him and rejected him. Just the idea of that resonated in such a deep way. And it's, it's only in, in a way that, you know, being a new mom, uh, that I could really see that with fresh eyes. Yeah, not, not something I'd be willing to do. I wouldn't uh, give up my kids for you. Gosh, no. No. Mm. 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 Let's hear you sing. Let's hear you worship.
We're singing. 